My name's Gail, as you all know. Um, I'm 63 now. I was 57 when I was diagnosed with multiple myeloma. Um, I'm married, my husband Les. I have two boys, um, two daughter-in-laws and two grandchildren, all live in London. Um, I enjoy a lot of sport. I play golf, used to play hockey, tennis, um, riding bikes now we're into, um, walking. Um, I walk, I like to walk 15, 16, 20 k's at a time. Um, clean gardener and love fishing. Um, now, five years ago, I felt um, some pain in my chest. Didn't think much of it, just kept going on with life, fishing. Uh, went up to a wonga, um, fell from the boat to the ground and hurt my ribs. Still didn't think anything of it. Um, <clears throat> and then um, it got worse, so I went to the doctors, my GP, and she said, oh, it's just soft tissue damage, so we treated for soft tissue damage. I uh, didn't get any better, so I went to Bowen therapy. I had physio. I went into a, an osteopath, chiropractor, and still didn't improve. So then we decided to have a blood test and a bone scan. When I had the bone scan done, the doctor said, no one, you're in a lot of pain. And he said, you have eight fractured ribs. Mm -hmm. By this time at home, I was having pillows all around me. <coughs> Driving to work, I was finding the straightest road I can go on as I was turning corners. Work got very hard. Um, I worked at a day therapy in the physio department. One day was walking nursing home patients and the other one was in the pool, which was great. Um, <coughs> So anyway, when the results came back, the doctor said I had myeloma. So the first thing I did was, oh, okay, I might be here at Christmas time, but again, clean out the laundry cupboard. So I pulled everything out and restocked everything. Then I saw Dr. Reardon, <coughs> and again, we had more blood tests, uh, bone skin, bone, uh, bone marrow biopsy, um, an echocardiograph done, and the echocardiograph came back that I had a thickening around the heart muscle. Um, and when I had the bone marrow biopsy, I came out with two patches on either side. The first side apparently had no bone marrow and they went to the left side. So then my treatment started. I had a portacath put in and <coughs> started the steroids and a pump, the pump with the chemo was like a bum bag um, and it dripped every one minute so at night you heard this drip drip but that went from Monday to Wednesday and then Wednesday I'd go in and have a top up and then on Friday I would have it taken out so this went on for four months um, my myeloma was very aggressive and Dr. Reardon thought at the time we better go and see Dr. Bashford. So in December, I was referred to Dr. Bashford at the Wesley Hospital. Um, we had more bone marrow biopsy done, an echocardiograph done, and more blood test. And in February, oh, and they, they talked about the stem cell transplant. We went through that, what, what was going to happen everything. Um, at the beginning, I'll just go back at the beginning, we never ever went on the internet to find out what multiple myeloma was. We had our trust and, and kept with the doctors what they said we did. So anyway, Dr. Bashford, we did the harvesting of the stem cells. Um, I had neurofrim, uh, uh, self-injected um, seven days, and then we had the stem cell collection in three weeks. Um, that was done at the Wesley Hospital. Um, I was to come down on the Sunday and it was going to be that week I was going to have the stem cell transplant. I've got an infection 
So I ended up in hospital in intensive care. That was okay. That was on Wednesday. That got better. Thursday, I went down and did my my um, harvesting of my stem cells. Over two days, roughly six hours, I produced 28 million stem cells. So three weeks later, I go back into the Wesley Hospital and I have the very high dose of chemo, which whoever's had stem cell know all about it. Um, it takes all your immune system away and in that 24 hours, you then have your stem cells um, transplant into you. Um, I was in hospital for five weeks. I got very bad ulcerated mouth, uh, tongue, esophagus and stomach. Um, eating was a problem. Um, exercising was a problem. I, I found it very hard to exercise. My husband was with me all the time and he was, he pushed me, pushed me. Um, the garden, the roof garden was wonderful. It was lovely to, to get on the roof and a bit of fresh air. I can remember the fourth, oh, you know, I had the vomiting and the diary and the whole works. I can remember the fourth week, oh no, hang on, I've got to go back a bit, I missed a bit here. <laughs> um, but the third week, I got some, a funny feeling across the chest and I, Tony, who was a wonderful male nurse at night, I rang and I said, Tony, I've got this funny feeling in my chest and he said, I'll oh, well, try this tablet and see if it works under your tongue. Only about but five minutes later I rang and I said, Tony, it didn't work. And he came in and excuse the language, I looked at him, perspiration was rolling off his of his forehead and I said, oh shit, I'm in strife. <laughs> so anyway, an ECG was done. Next minute I'm down in ICU. And then Dr. Ben Fitzgerald comes on board. So, <clears throat> so the fourth week, I was getting very stressed being in hospital. I had enough. So I'd get up early in the morning and I'd sit in the chair and wait for Dr. Bashford to make out I'm well, I'm going home now. And he'd come in and say, you spiked temperature again, you know, might have an infection. So by the fifth week, I just, I had a high temperature one night and I said to the nurse, and now I've done nursing, so I know, don't write it down, don't <laughs> tell them. I want to get home. <laughs> but anyway, he come in, he said, oh, you can't go home today, you had another temperature. So anyway, by the fifth week, I eventually got out and uh, the Leukaemia Foundation had my husband in one of the units down on that main road, down the bottom of the hospital. And <coughs> we get home, we're probably only home half a day. He says, come on, time for a walk. So he dragged me across this road. The lights must have turned twice before I got across. And we walked down those steps along the water and back again. We did that for the whole week until um, I had to go back and see Dr. Bashford and have another bone, bone uh, <coughs> biopsy done. And then I was able to go home. So six weeks by the time I got home, in that period of six weeks, my husband went home twice to Budroom. He stayed there. The Leukaemia Foundation um, units he stayed in the whole time. He did his, we have a little business, he did his work from my, from my bedside. He showered me every morning. It was, it was great. I wouldn't have been able to do it without him. Um, anyway, when we got home, at night time I couldn't sleep. I had to have a light on somewhere. I got very anxious. So I always had a light on. And that lasted probably about six months. And I, I was following. Um, in May, I was out of hospital in April. In May, mid-May, mid I got, got the phone call from Dr. Bashford to say I was cancer-free or in remission. Um, so then we tried the thalidomide for six months. And, and I was on Sumeto. 
infusion every month. And I was still going to Dr. Bashford to January 2009 and he said, it's time for you to go back to Dr. Reading and live your normal life again. So I did, I went back, we started our monthly treatment. We went from Iridia to, we went from Sumeta to Iridia. Uh, in May, we went up to Fraser Fishing and I got my second lot of shingles. And I think the second lot of shingles was through stress because I really didn't want to go to Fraser Island. <laughs> but anyway, so we're up there and believe it or not, they had a doctor flying in with medication because I didn't have any medication. So anyway, we got over that. Um, then I got trouble with swallowing food. Just the slightest little bit of food would get caught in my esophagus. So then came Dr. McIntosh, the endoscopy. So I used to have dilatations to stretch the esophagus. It was only nine mil millimetres and apparently uh, a normal person is 17. So eventually over two monthly periods, he eventually stretched it out to 17 millimetres. And I haven't been back to him for two years, so that seems pretty good. Um, I went back to work, light duties. I wore a wig till my hair grew back. One of the physios, she said, oh, I love that style of hair. That's the type of hair I want. And I just picked it up and gave it to her. <laughs> so she's walking around the, the hospital and I've got no hair. So I said, oh, well, just walk around too. No one will take any notice. Won't worry. Um, anyway, so we um, went back to work and I just did the light duties by w just w working in the hydrotherapy pool, which was great. I mean, the temperature was 34 and it was heaven. Um, now, my ongoing um, procedure is um, heaps of exercises, walking, bike riding, uh, Pilates. I go three times a week. I absolutely love that. Gardening, and at present we are building another deck. Um, oh, that photo that you saw with that bit of timber, we built that deck just before I got sick. Um, that's our house. So that was part of my walk. That driveway is like that. So he had me walking up and down that hill. This little bird, he was my therapy when I was having um, this, the chemotherapy. I'd sit and watch him build a nest, or them, the two of them, build a nest and watch the little chicks. Yeah, <laughs> that's the deck, part of the deck we built. So that's a nine metre drop. So we, we did well. Um, we live in a lovely environment. Um, we're on an acre down in the rainforest. Um, <coughs> in February this year, I had a little bit of a hiccup. We'd been away for two months and we came back up that little cyclone that went through, a mess everywhere. So I worked probably eight or nine hours in the garden without stop. My back got really sore. I had pins and noodles from head to toe and I thought, oh, it's five years, it's back. Anyway, so <coughs> I went and had physio, five treatments of physio and um, three massages and I came good. But in that period I had to have my um, iridia and because you have your blood test first and Dr. Reden said, um, have you been stressed or worried about something? And I said, oh yeah, my back's sore, I just can't get it better. He said, well, I want to see you in six weeks instead of three months, so, which I did. And um, by that time, my back was back to normal, no, no pins and needles. And my protein level had gone back to normal to what it was. So <coughs> it was just stress. So it is very important not to stress. Um, now, Bloom Hill, we have Bloom Hill at, at, on the Sunshine Coast, which is fantastic. <laughs> we, um, it's Bloom Hill is a community cancer rehab centre. It has massages, reflexology, massage, um, sorry, yoga, mindless and relaxation, which I really did need uh, after 12 months. 
it really helped. Um, it was very good, good networking. Uh, my side effects now, uh, I have a small ulcer on my tongue, which now I will go and see about after Kylie, Kylie said. Um, so it does affect my eating. I can't eat chocolate anymore. Um, citrus food, spicy food, um, it all affects my tongue. Not to say I don't have it, because I do, but I just pay for it for a day or two. So um, I have um, the toe numbness is not bad. It's pretty good. Um, I only feel that more when I'm walking probably a long distance, like 10, 15 k's or whatever, whatever but it is better. Uh, rash on the legs, apparently that's from the stem cell transplant. Um, it's the blood vessels coming to the top of your skin. I use a fatty ointment um, on that uh, for two weeks and it's gone. And then when it gets hot again, it comes back, so I just repeat doing it. But that works. Dry mouth, um, I don't know if it's because I drink so much water, I drink two, two and a half litres a day. Um, it's like my little puppy dog I carry along with me, I always got water with me. Support, I would like to take the opportunity to thank all the people that helped me through my journey, Dr. Reedon, Dr. Bashford, Dr. Fitzgerald and their staff, nursing staff at Wesley Hospital and Scott was great. Um, Les, my sons Craig and Robbie in London, a workmate Brenda who helped out when Les wasn't around, my two sisters and a school friend who was my bridesmaid I hadn't seen for 30 years. As soon as she heard I was sick, she was on the doorstep. And we still do things today to help each other out. Uh, Bloomhill Budroom and finally the Queensland uh, Leukaemia Foundation. They, they have been fantastic and in so many ways. Uh, support for families that stay in the units. These seminars, they've been great. Summary, I've been cancer free or in remission for five years. I'm going to prove them wrong. I am going to get past 15 years. It's not going to return. My diet is now completely different to what it was when I start, when I, before I got multiple myeloma. I'm conscious of stress levels. I try to manage it. Um, and value physical fitness and my well-being. And that's my story. I have quite a bit of organic food. Um, I was a devil for sweet stuff. Um, I tried to cut down to twice a week. Um, when I say sweet stuff, I used, my father and I were really bad. We used to have um, white bread, cream, brown sugar and cream again. <laughs> so I cut all that out. I, don't have, I used to have cream on porridge, I cut that out. But, but probably half and half, more organic. I try more organic anyway. Yeah, and fruit and fresh fruit and veggies. No, I'm not fully organic, no. No, I mix it. Yeah. I just don't eat as much. Thank you.